Hi family, welcome to Intimate Conversations with Francis O'Brien, healing one heart at a time. How are you doing family? I hope you're great, I hope you're fantastic, I hope everything is going well, despite everything that's happening in the world. I just hope you're doing good. Darn good for that matter. I'm good, I'm okay. Everything is going all right. Um, it's, I'm just making the most of the festive holidays and trying to get as much content as I can out there. The Holy Spirit is just downloading messages and I am grateful and I am humbled, you know, to be able to share my story with you guys. Please don't forget to co like, comment, share and subscribe. I always forget to mention that in my videos. Share these videos if you feel that they're going to help a fellow sister, a brother, whoever you feel is going to benefit. Please make sure that you share. Um, these li the links to my videos. That's number one. Two, don't forget to like. I really would appreciate your likes. Three, more importantly, please comment. I would love to hear what you guys have on your minds. I'd like to know what you guys think. What do you agree with? Whether you agree, whether you disagree, just to share your views. You can greet, you can say holla. Either way, just make sure that you reach out to me. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, let's get into today's video. It's on a more serious note, but I'll try to not be so serious. Today's topic I'm still trying to figure out. Mm, the Holy Spirit did give me the message, but I'm trying to figure out <laughs> how to word it because it's, it's a dual. I'm choosing between nobody owes you anything and uh, I've forgotten the other title of they don't owe you something like that. So nobody owes you anything or they don't owe you. So um, I'll see how the Holy Spirit leads me as to how to title this video, but basically it's to do with nobody owes you anything in this world. So let's get into it. Now, obviously with personal experience, this is what birthed this video, as with many of my other videos. So if you haven't checked those out, please make sure that you go into my channel and you view the other videos that I have posted. I know that they may seem long to you guys. Please do be patient. They are worth it. I believe they're worth it. I've had positive feedback um, with people telling me that they really appreciate the stuff that I'm, you know, and that I'm giving out. And most people prefer just telling me the one-on-one -on -one or actually sending me messages as my friends on WhatsApp. And I'm like, please put that on my channel. Like comment at the bottom. It's important. I need those comments, <laughs> you know, but look, people reach out to you the way they feel comfortable reaching out to you. Um, so this, I was having conversations as usual with, uh, you know, with various people and it flashed back, it flashed me back to a scenario and this one I would like to say, I don't know about men, but I would say men because of my past, hmm. but I'm going to also say this is particularly for women, particularly for women in the sense that we go through so many hardships, we go through difficulties, we go through major trials and tribulations, sometimes on our own, sometimes with our children. That's why I said it's a kind of a serious video, but I'm trying to, I'm going to try and put my point across without sounding so dreary. I don't want to be dreary. <laughs> I don't know. I'm an animated person, in case you guys don't know. I'm really an animated person, so just get used to it. So um, there was a time in my life when I felt like the person that I was in a relationship with owed me. Like, I felt like he owed me. And I'll tell you why. You know what, it, you, you know, as a woman, you give so much of yourself. You sacrifice financially, emotionally, intellectually, um, <sighs> mentally. You know, you invest in your partner. And then when you're not uh, receiving what you feel you are due or what you feel you deserve or your worth, you lash out and you get angry. You get angry because you are being shortchanged. Now, when in this particular scenario, there was a time when I was going through a very hard time in my life. I wasn't working. Um, my, my son was a baby at the time. He had serious health complications. My partner at the time was also not working. I was living in an apartment that had no electricity. It had water. So... I literally used to use a candle and I used to cook with what we call here primer stove, um, a kerosene stove, for those that will know what that is. And um, yeah, it was a very difficult time. And I remember um, I expected this person to help me out as is expected. 
from your partner, the person that you're in a relationship with, because you guys are going through this together, or so you would believe, or so you would think you're going through this together, and, um, you know, you've invested, you feel you've invested your part, and just because you're facing your period of downtime, you expect your partner to pick you up, as it should be with every relationship. Now, both of us were down. Um, he came up with a solution, <laughs> you know, it was sad, but basically he had a female friend. Ladies, I have had so many situations in my life where I've had to really swallow my pride and almost be at the mercy of strangers. It, it was very uncomfortable, it was very humbling, it was unnerving for me. So, um, you know, uh, long story short, he made an arrangement with this lady that every morning I go to her house and I make formula for my baby, I make porridge for my baby, and I just get some hot water and that type of stuff. This arrangement didn't even last a week. I remember it was early hours of, it was early in the morning, I think around half past six, seven, and I had to make sure that I would get there while she was still there because I didn't want her to have the impression that I come in her absence and then I start, you know, roaming around her house, even though she had a maid. So, um, I remember one morning, this was, must have been the third day, of this arrangement. I didn't know her personally. She was not she was known to my partner at the time. On the third day I get there with my pots, my baby's porridge, his formula. I'm getting ready to prepare because I have no power at my house, so I was just gonna make what I could for the day and then go back. I remember the maid when I got to the gate, the maid refused to open the gate and when I asked her, why aren't you opening the gate? And she said, no, my, uh, my boss said I mustn't open the gate for anyone. I said, but you've opened for me for the past. She said, yes. She said, even if it's you, I mustn't open the gate. I can't tell you, man. I was miserable. I, I, I just fell deep into depression because I'm like, okay, I don't know how to feed my baby because breastfeeding at the time just wasn't enough. He was a big baby and he had a big appetite. I had to call this, you know, my partner again and say, you know what, this is a situation you need to find a solution. You're a man. You need to find a way, you, you know, of getting us to eat, getting us to get, get baby something to eat. I mean, I can go hungry. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like I said, there's, I've got quite a few stories and I can just backtrack on them and they're just miserable. They really, they were really miserable stories. So anyway, um, It's so difficult to say, I promise you, Holy Spirit, please give me strength to say this. Eventually, yes, he, he, he made a plan, but his plan was still bouncing from people's houses to get us by. So, long story short, years later, I developed resentment. Severe, severe resentment. Um, I can't even say years later, I could say probably it's a couple of months to a year or two later, I really developed resentment for this person because I was so angry. How could you allow us to fall so deep? And every I have tried my best to kind of pick us up. It's your turn now because I'm down. You should make a way. You should find a way to do this. I had such resentment for this person. I blamed him for the situation that we were in. I blamed him for the level of deterioration we had reached. I blamed him for so many things, so many things. And I got into a mindset of rage. I got into an, an, a mind, an emotional cage of bitterness. It was a dark period. Family, look, I've, I've, I've really passed through a lot. It was a really dark period in my life, an extremely dark period in my life. And I just thank God that God brought me through this. And he brought me through it, you know. Um, I started, feeling that this person owes me. He owes me. He owes me and I don't care. He can lie on the ground dying and bleeding. This person owes me for everything that he has put me through, for everything he has made us go through, for the suffering that we have gone through. This person, this brother owes me and I didn't care. I would cause havoc in that house. If he would come in, it would be a tornado. He would leave quickly because 
he knew that if I start anything with this female, she's just going to unleash. And I promise you, family, I unleashed. I was so angry that my life had deteriorated to such a degree. I had never been exposed to that kind of a lifestyle before. So moving forward, um, I really expected this person to do a lot. And unfortunately, he kept on, it was a shortfall, minus, deficit, depletion, negative. It was everything in the minus. He just wasn't holding up his, part, his, his end of the deal. And I was really angry and I was bitter. And um, I think I changed into a different person. That's part of sometimes when you're in a wrong relationship with the person, you will change, you will morph. It's not a nice thing. But unfortunately, it's, it's, it, it is due to the circumstances that you're exposed to, that you become this individual, that you become this person. So out of the, you know, out of the anger and years later, I realized, you know what, it's up to me to make a better life for myself and my son. I completely removed focus from this person and I said, you know what, it's up to me to make myself, to give myself a better life, to give my son a better life. I can't tell you, that time was a period in my life where God really grew my faith. I strengthened so much and, and you know, in retrospect, I realized that there's everything happens for a reason. My, my relationship with God was rekindled. It was reignited. I fasted. I prayed fervently. I cannot tell you. Eventually I got a job, you know, and stuff like that and I realized I didn't have to put so much pressure on myself by pressuring him. The decision was always mine. This is the point I'm putting across to a lot of women. Some of you may find you in difficult places and you may really sit back and you'll be like, I am not lifting a finger. This person is going to do one, two, three. He is going to pay all the bills. He's going to do this. You know what, ne? It, that, that mindset can last you a couple of months, but it's a toxic mindset and it's going to make you a very bitter person, it's going to make you a very angry person, it's going to make you, it's going to, you're going to just be surrounded by a world of darkness and it's going to be very difficult, ladies, trust you me, it's going to be difficult for you to come out of. You will find different ways to alleviate your pain. I've been there and, you know... <laughs> And I'm going to be really honest with you. You are going to find so many different ways. You will either drink, you'll either smoke, you'll either have promiscuous relationships, you will become a, you know, you'll take your frustration out on your kids, you will become a vile person. And it's because you are angry. It's because you believe that this person owes you. This person deteriorated your life. And we've sung the song before. I wasn't like this before you met me. I was one, two, three, I was successful. Look at my life now, you, you know, you'll, you know, you'll point at your clothing, you'll point at your house, you know, you'll gesture at everything around you that this is not me, I am better than this. Sorry about that. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be more successful than this and stuff like that. And before you even get to that, refocus, recenter. The choice is yours, ladies. The choice is yours. Let go of that individual and pick up yourself. That person, yes, to a certain extent, they do owe you, but if you see that this person family is not pulling their weight, their dead weight to you, don't now be a chain to that anchor and follow that anchor down to the bottom of the ocean. No, lose, that, lose yourself as a chain. Let the anchor drop and sink on its own. It's okay. You will find yourself. You will pick up the pieces of your life work hard, find opportunities, rediscover yourself, find joy in your children, find joy in your job. If you are working at the time, by the grace of God, you're working and you, you know, you're not, you're not jobless, hopefully like I was. Reinvent yourself, rediscover yourself, heal. And it's unfortunate when you're married to the person because it becomes difficult to separate from that person because not only are you dealing with dead weight, but you're also dealing with the fact that you're attached to an individual and you don't know how to get out of that situation. And it's just fighting every day. It's a toxic environment for you. It's a toxic environment for the kids. There is just, you know, demons that are just having a fun fest at your house, at your home. I'm not encouraging divorce because there is nothing like divorce in God's word. 
he does not like it. If it requires separation, if it requires mediation, either by the church, either by a counsellor, a therapist, whatever it takes. But my point is, ladies, once you have passed that threshold of he owes me, you need to really refocus and tell yourself, you know what, nobody owes me anything. He doesn't owe me anything. She doesn't owe me anything. I am the owner of my life. I am the driver of my life. And I'm going to make sure that I do everything in my power to be the best that I can. I always preach in my videos that you owe it to yourself to become the best version of yourself. No one can come into your life and take care of you for you. Unless if this is your God or ordained husband. And that's not to say challenges aren't there in marriages. That's a different conversation. All I'm saying is... Make sure that you are an individual who cares for yourself. Care for yourselves, ladies. Care for yourselves, guys, if this applies to you. There are people out there that are just hell-bent on using and abusing other people and they don't care who they drag along to the pits of hell with them. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. You owe yourself. I hope you hear me in the spirit and you hear me deeper than ever. You owe yourself a better life. You owe yourself, you owe your children a better life. You owe your own family, your parents who brought you into this world and suffered and struggled. You owe yourself, not even them. Which makes me move on to the next point. Even if as parents, right? Your parents had, sorry guys, I'm looking at my timer just in case you see me glancing down. I just don't want to pass my timer. It's a, it's a parent's responsibility to bring a child into this world, feed the child, um, house the child, clothe the child, take the child to school. Once the child has grown and is now a young adult, if the parent is confident that they have instilled the right values and morals in their child and belief systems, it is the child or the young adult's responsibility to now pick themselves up and go forward with their lives. I have heard uh, many stories of young adults blaming their parents for the situation. Yeah, you brought me into this world. I didn't ask you. No, madam. Yes, that may be the situation that they brought you. But you know what? You now have a brain. For the fact that you can even have that conversation, you're just looking for a scapegoat because you're lazy, because you're scared, because you're fearful of the unknown. You don't know. You're uncertain of the future. So now you want to run back to that comfort zone, the shelter of your parents. I've seen parents who even kick their kids out because they're sick and tired because the kids are grown and they're lazy and they don't want to do anything. And then these, these kids are so spoiled, they feel entitled and they don't want to leave the house and they're frustrating the child, you know, their parents because they're now adults and now it's a clash. Listen, if you're a young adult and you're staying in your parents' house and you're being a thorn in your parents' flesh, I promise you what you're doing to your parents, you are going to reap it tenfold. Because you don't know what pain it is you're putting in your parents' hearts. And you don't know if they're going to wish the same thing for you. That the same thing you do to me, my child, you are going, your children will do the same thing to you. That is not a blessing. It is a curse. You might not see it at that time. Like, ah, there's nothing like that. You will reap what you sow. So don't walk around thinking that your parents owe you their life. They also were children of somebody else. Nah. And they grew up. So if you're a young adult and you're listening to this, so parents, if you feel that you want to pass this message on and share it to your children, please make sure that you do. Young adults, when you grow up and you are now of a working age, please move out of your parents' house. They don't owe you anything more than what they have done for you. If they've educated you and they've fed you and they've clothed you, now you are an adult, you are able to go out into the world to fend for yourself. Nobody owes you anything. You don't. If anything, you must now pay back your parents in gifts However the Lord blesses you and, guide and leads you to bless your parents, thank you for the life you've given me. And now I'm talking about children, obviously, that have had the opportunity and the privilege to be looked after by either foster parents or their biological parents or by family members. Yes, it's a nice thing to give back to the people that have brought you to say thank you. Thank you. And the biggest payment to a parent is a child who is literally successful in their life. That actually turned out okay. You would be surprised. Your parents wouldn't even want money from you. They wouldn't even want a gift from you. They wouldn't want anything. All they want to see is you successful. So that when they close their eyes on their last day on this earth, they know that they did the best that they can. Or the, they know that they did the best that they could for you. And they can rest in peace knowing that you will be okay. Stop walking around 
with self-centered attitudes thinking people owe you. People don't owe you anything. You know why? Because people have problems. We are living in a difficult time right now and nobody's got time to be looking at the other person and you know what, if you come and you've got a, a mountain of problems, I, it's easy for me to just close my door. You know why? Because It's not out of selfishness, but it's, you know what? You are being a spoiled person, you're being a spoiled brat, you need to go back to your parents or you need to go back to where you're coming from because you're just looking for handouts, you're looking for coupons, you're looking for, you know, people to just make life easy for you. No, nobody owes you anything. So, family, I've been listening to a lot of women, women around me who really feel that, no, he owes me to do this, he owes me. You know what? Leave the person. Leave that person. It's that simple. It's honestly, family, it's that simple. But a lot of women don't want to let go. They don't want to let go because it's easier to latch onto a person. It's easier to release your, your, you know, your frustrations on the object of your pain. It's easier for you to lash out on the person that you feel has just done you a great injustice. How long do you intend to hold on to that pain for, men, male or female? Exactly how long do you intend holding on to that pain? Oh, excuse me, what is it doing for you? Are you progressing? Are you getting any better? How is your health in the first place? How is your health as you're holding on to this person? This person is a fool, you know. In a perfect world, ladies, especially single women, I'm going to talk to single women. In a perfect world, they don't owe you, if you're, if you're co-parenting with somebody, you're not together, you're not in a relationship any longer. You've separated, but you've got kids. In a perfect world, we expect that the partner of our children, and I will specifically target men because that's the demographic at the moment in the country, actually most times in the world, where the father is the one who's supposed to pay maintenance and support to his children, right? So in that perfect world, he doesn't owe you as the woman anything. He owes his children, especially when they're minors. I agree. So you can't say you owe us. You owe the kids. You owe the kids. They didn't ask to be here. And hear me when I say minors. If you if you recall earlier on, I was referring to young adults who have finished their tertiary, who have finished their, their, their high school degrees, who have finished their degrees, whatever the case is. That's, you know, and it, parents, if you're going to listen to this, please, ne? I'm not talking about kids that have graduated and they're just sitting and they're literally not making an effort to find a job. Look, the world is crazy. I understand that it's difficult. If you can see that your child is is really struggling and they're going out there and they're hustling, please don't give that child a headache to say, you know what, just go offend. Don't do that because you're going to really mislead that young adult and make them go down the wrong, wrong path because you're going to meet up with the negative influences that are going to teach your young child, that are going to teach your child how to survive in a bad world. Bad. Right. So I'm talking about minors now. Under 18s as per the legal age in most countries. That man owes his children support. But here's the thing, family. Here's the second thing. Here's a twist. I will add to that. Women, if you know you're working fine, you may be struggling. How long do you want to chase this particular individual for? Because it frustrates you. It frustrates you. And it, what's even more frustrating is the inconsistency of this person. It is frustrating. It's depressing. It is angering. Are you becoming a better person? Are you not becoming a better person? Here's the thing. If that person is not pulling their weight, they will regret it at some point. Rest assured, your tears are not falling to the ground. Like the Bible says, my words will accomplish that which I have set them for. They will not fall to the ground. God listens to you when you pray. He hears your cry. He hears your frustration. He wants to help you. When is the miracle question? Or is the, not miracle question, when is the million dollar question? How is the even bigger million dollar question? You just have to keep holding on. Chasing after this person is not going to help. So remember, ladies, they physically don't owe you. You're an adult. You've got a complete brain. You know that you should be finding employment. You know that you should be working and trying to sustain. It's a difficult story. It's a different story. Yes, I understand. If your money isn't enough, maybe you were married, you've separated, this person is perhaps running away with maintenance. Yes, to a certain extent, you can get really riled up. It's case specific. But still, at the end of the day, I go back. 
Nobody owes you, especially as an adult, nobody owes you anything in this world. Nobody owes you anything. I can't say it enough. Nobody owes you anything. There are some really spoiled young adults out there that still feel that their parents should be supporting them, that still feel entitled to get that money from their parents. And it's stunning. It's stunning. There are some women who have just resolved to being housewives. Let's say you haven't even discussed this with your partner to be a housewife in the first place. You've just told yourself, I'm not going to work. And as, as he, because he has kids, hey, look, I brought these, the, the, look, I'm looking after these kids for you. You owe me. Look, ladies, eh? that attitude of dependency is going to be crippling in the long run. It can fly for so long. Hmm? It can fly for so long. But you're going to get to a point where you're tired. And that line itself is going to exhaust you. As you're saying it all the time, you will sound robotic. You will actually irritate yourself by constantly repeating that same sentence. You owe me. You owe me. You owe me. You know, some people, when they are irresponsible and they're reckless, they know what they're supposed to do. They know the right thing. They choose not to do it. Do you have the energy to be chasing after a grown person? You're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be doing this. They should know right from wrong. And if they don't know right from wrong, it says a lot about their foundation. It says a lot about their upbringing. And that's not something that you are going to now fix. It. <laughs> that person is an adult. You're not going to be chasing after that person. Mm -mm. It's the same with when you work, you know. And like I said, apply each scenario with wisdom. If you work and you feel that you are owed a higher salary, you can talk about it once or twice, but stop being bitter now and repeating. You can get fired for that statement. You owe me, you owe me, you owe me. If your boss comes to you and says, you know what, there's somebody else that can actually give. <laughs> if you leave, there's somebody like this, with a click of a finger, that's willing to take your place. Do you want to be hearing that kind of talk? So stop acting like a spoiled adult and a brat at the same time. It, this world is not easy for a lot of people. Some people get it easy, some people don't. Most people don't get it easy. If the favor comes your way, appreciate it. If the blessings come your way, appreciate it. If they haven't come your way, it's either it's time for you to leave that job or you be patient, a good thing will come to you. But yeah, I've been sacrificing this. Someone, some way is watching you in that office space. Yeah, I've been doing this. I've been sacrificing. These people don't care. They don't see me. Keep your mouth quiet. Keep your mouth quiet. If they don't see your worth and they don't look like it, they don't acknowledge your worth, then just change. Until then, the best thing to do is to keep quiet. Nobody owes you. As far as your company is concerned, if you're working there, and that's all, that was also a lesson for me, nah? let me tell you, as I'm ministering, 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 don't even think this doesn't apply, Yay! it applies to me more than you even know, more than you even know. So I'm not talking about things that are hearsay, I am talking about things that I have physically lived and I've walked through. You get to a point where you have to keep quiet, be grateful that you have a job. At least that's paying your rent, that's paying your bills, that's taking your kids to school, that's putting food in your mouth, that's putting a roof over your head. Be grateful for that. To walk around with a sense of entitlement, thinking people owe you, is going to set you up for the biggest downfall of your life. It is going to be the most humiliating crash that you have ever experienced in your life. And that now goes all around. If you walk around with an attitude of self-entitlement, you owe me this. You owe me that. Nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. So going back to my story, it was a hard lesson for me. When I realized that clearly, when you say to somebody, you owe me, it's because you've put your hope in that person. The Bible does say that those that trust in men are fools. They didn't say, uh, God was very specific. Let me see if I can find that verse in the Bible anyway. Those who put their trust in the Lord. I want to be very specific. Those who put their trust in the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. So that was one of the verses, but I want to find the other one. Those who put their trust in man. That was the one I was actually looking for. This is what the Lord says. Sorry, I didn't even give you the verse for the previous one. So this is coming from Jeremiah 17 verse 
5. Jeremiah, for this current one, is Jeremiah 17, verse 5, and it says, This is what the Lord says, and I'm reading for the, from the NIV version. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. It does say that those who trust in the Lord are blessed, and they shall receive favor. So let me see if I can go back and find that one. It comes, yeah, that verse is uh, from Psalm 125, verse 1. Psalm chapter 125, verse 1, that says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, they shall not be shaken. So when you find yourself saying your own is because you've put your hope and your trust in that person and you're expecting them to turn, those who trust in man, those who put their trust in man, uh, I can't tell you, family, and I, I'm not, I'm, I've been there. I've done that. I have demanded. I have expected. Here's another verse from the Bible. Proverbs 28 verse 26. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept. Why am I not finding the one, you know, that says those who trust in man? Uh, those, I can't find it, but I'll see if I can find it, family, and I'll put you know, I'll put that verse up on the screen if I do find it. If I don't, please bear with me. So don't walk around with a self. I think I've covered the majority of what I wanted to say. Don't put your trust in man. You will be gravely disappointed. You will be painfully, painfully disappointed. And I repeat, nobody owes you anything. So family, I'm signing out because I hope that this video has blessed you. I hope it has touched you. Please make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe in this video. This is Intimate Conversations with Francis O'Brien, healing one heart at a time. Until next time, be blessed, stay blessed, always.